meeting of July the 29th. At this time, I'd like for the ones at the DS to introduce themselves to our constituents. Hi, I'm Bridget Doherty and I'm running the Zoom. <laughs> Leslie Hervey, assistant to the clerk. Jacqueline Paniotto, clerk of the board. Alicia Reese, vice president, Hamilton County Commission. County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Holly Christman, assistant county administrator. Michael Freeman, legal counsel to the board. Thank you. And I'm Stephanie Sumro Dumas, president of the board. Bridget, I thought you were going to say you're running for office or something. What is going on? Okay. So we're going to get started like we always do. We've got a lot of great things before us today. And we always start with silent prayer. And then if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. So let's take a few moment, moments for a silent prayer. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes of the previous session. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Mr. Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Um, and now we have public comments. Uh, we do have a public hearing starting at 115. So if there is just uh, some general comments, you're welcome to come up at this time. Maureen Green. And you have two minutes uh, for your comments. Thank you for coming. County Settlement Covenant for Ohio Nation Preamble. We, the sovereign people living on the land in Ohio Nation, a free and independent nation, in order to live together in harmony under common law of the Almighty Creator, to facilitate the avoidance of disputes, to facilitate the quick settlement of disputes which might arise, to provide for organized defense of life, liberty, and private property, to protect and administer public property for the benefit of the inhabitants, and to make certain limited agreements with other settlements of sovereign people for mutual benefit, ordained common accord and recognition the following notice, date 29 July, 2021. Comes now inhabitants of Ohio nation by absolute writ of habeas corpus and with absolute resolve rebut all corporate authority, county settlement covenant in all 88 counties, original assembly and library of records on date 10 June, 2021. Gives this nation settlement announcement, Ohio nation settlement covenant and in harmony with all 88 counties, we find article one, by almighty God granting us freedom, by unanimous decree, the local peoples and local peaceable law of lawful assembly and settlement covenant in Ohio, a free and independent state, a member of free and independent nations with other free and independent nations, all known as Republic for the United States for America. Section one, local people and family of man and woman center in almighty God live on local land and newsway land in people jurisdiction and grace affirmed by the authority of the unanimous declaration of independence circa 1776 in bill of rights articles the 5th 7th 9th 10th circa 1787 to 1871 and beyond beyond the reach of predator others and also affirmed by circa 1803 ohio constitution the covenant of ohio a free and predator others and also affirmed by circa 1803 ohio constitution the covenant of ohio a free and independent state circa 2020 this entire document may be viewed at Ohio General Assembly Records Librarian during assembly meeting. Notice to the principal is notice to the agent and notice to the agent is notice to the principal. Thank you for your time. Hamilton County is now a de jure county. God bless Hamilton County. God bless Ohio State and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for coming. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carol Smith. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I am here from Roseline Community Council, and it is our understanding that the commission has been asked to support a, uh, a request from Talbot House to uh, create a Section 8 building at um, 1579 Summit Avenue, Summit Road, excuse me, in Roseline. We were against the project initially, and we tried to stop the project from being uh, developed in uh, 2019. However, it did not, we were too late to do anything about it. But we def definitely do not want another Section 8 building in our neighborhood. We have 
over 600 units of Section 8 housing in our community. Uh, and we also have mental health buildings and uh, other disability buildings. And we are looking to make it more, to continue our residential, but not be over flooded by Section 8 uh, renters or homeowners. Uh, we are really uh, looking at the issues that we described as existing similar locations in Rose Line. Talbot House has four, Hamilton County has six mental health board and Excel and Housing Network of Hamilton County has properties there. 67% of our existing housing is rental. Uh, existing neighborhood crime stats are very high. We have a lot of shots fired for drug problems and what have you. And a number of sex offenders are in Roseline and the building that is it, that they're potentially occupying, they would not guarantee us that there will not be sexual offenders in there. And it's only a thousand, thousand feet from our school, Roseline Condon School. And the project is over, uh, is in question of the guarantee of sex offenders. That's one of the issues. Um, we have a lot of, of situations there and we're trying to move forward. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, um, Carol. Uh, and I would only suggest that, um, I know you're representing the council, um, the Roseline Council. Um, I would recommend that maybe those people that are in the area that will be directly impacted, that maybe you can have them sign something indicating that they do not want this to happen. And we can then submit it into uh, to our clerk of the board. So uh, we can just know who's uh, not in favor of it. I think that would be helpful. Okay, uh -huh. you're very welcome. Okay, um, we have a public hearing, it's at 1.15, so we could probably run through um, comments and motions. Madam uh, President, if no I could, else. we've got one person on the Zoom that okay. has their hands up. Very good. And it's Carrie Davis, and Carrie, give me a second, and I'll unmute you. Carrie, you have the pleasure of the board for two minutes. Hello, y'all touch and base. Um, since April 22nd, I've been asking the board to get involved in and take action to protect the 20,000 residents in Southwest Hamilton County who are going to be impacted by the Rumpke uh, landfill expansion. I've jumped through every single loop that you guys have put in front of me, every obstacle. And as I told you then, I'm right back to you guys because you guys are the ones who have the power to act um, on behalf of the residents. And I've been begging you to pass some rules. Um, we've been waiting over two months for the county prosecutor's office to give you all an opinion on the scope of your power and authority and they didn't bother to provide that before I did my presentation before um, the Solid Waste Committee. So the Solid Waste Committee is being left, everybody's left hanging. You know, everybody's waiting on an opinion that nobody is even given us an update on. And I'd like to know if this board is going to um, tell us what, the, the attorney says your powers and authority are. And since now, while we were waiting on this, Rumpke was approved for another boundary expansion. While we were waiting for the county prosecutor and the board of commissioners to figure out who's the boss and who's got what power. And so I'm trying to figure out where we're going with this because I've done everything you all have asked me to do, even though it was a complete waste of time because the issue is one for the Board of Commissioners. And I'd like to hear from you all about what we're going to do at, at this juncture. Thank you so much, Ms. Davis. And um, as you know, um, an administrator has called you. I don't know if you talked directly to our prosecutor, but we're certainly glad to continue to work with you. And explanations were given as it relates to why uh, we did not get involved with that appeal. So we certainly have not been waiting. Uh, it's uh, We've been working uh, with you, even though it's not 
um, where the way you'd like for us to do it, we'll continue to work with you uh, if you're willing to do that. And um, you can get more explanation from um, our prosecutor's office at another time and also our administrator. So I appreciate you calling in. Okay. Um, we'll go to comments and motions from our, from our commissioners. Uh, Vice President Reese. Yes, thank you very much. Got a couple. Um, one is uh, just wanted to say that I just came from the uh, 513 relief bus. Um, there were a lot of folks who asked about it coming to Price Hill. Um, and so Susan Blitz uh, was one of the people and some other folks just want to report that it uh, is in Price Hill and uh, today and we were able to get some people who have been very hesitant about taking the vaccine. People understand that this new variant is real. Um, it's, it's very real and it's very dangerous. And so we were able to get some folks uh, there uh, as I, right before I left, some people came up, grandmother bringing grandson, uh, mother and daughter uh, coming up. Another gentleman was coming up. So I think that's positive uh, news to, to report that. And then also uh, want to give a recognition to the Cincinnati Recreation Commission because it's also a partnership we had today with them and their youth to work program. And these are young people who are working this summer. And uh, I hated that we had, I wish we were off today because I would have loved to get in the pool with them and go down the slide with them. They're just, I'm, I, I didn't want to leave. I'm like, oh my God, they're having so much fun. But I was just want to put a highlight on young people that's doing something positive because a lot of times we put a lot of our focus on the ones who are not doing the right thing. And it was hundreds of young people who were working, interning, and have come through uh, a, a youth employment program. Uh, second is, I do want to um, highlight the Black Music uh, Walk of Fame. It was a great launch, a great event. Uh, over a thousand people did come to the Icon for this event. Uh, we were able to uh, launch our uh, inaugural inductees, Bootsy Collins, uh, Dr. Charles Fold, um, Otis Williams, and the Isley Brothers, and people had a great time. And I just want to thank folks for that event. Now, that particular event, um, I want to thank Procter & Gamble, Damon Jones, because that was privately funded, so we could have a great fun event. Um, and there are stars in the hallway. So those who are here, if you want to see the stars, you can take a picture with those stars, which will go into the ground next year when the interactive uh, Walk of Fame Park is built. So you can, get a, you can get your picture with the star. But I do want to acknowledge, um, I want to acknowledge, uh, certainly um, President Dumas was there. Thank you for being there. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus could not be there, but she was there virtually. So we were able to have a video. Thank you for doing that. I also want to thank Phil Beck. Uh, I've, I've already talked about P&G, Damon Jones, uh, P.N. Everson, Price Entertainment, um, Marie Carroll down at the banks with Phil, uh, Jonathan Martin, CEO of the, of the symphony who owns the icon, and Mike Smith, who his team runs it, and his entire team was great. Eddie Cohen from the Urban League, Lincoln Ware, Ohio Media School. So we had young people there able to film it and uh, be a part of documenting it. Uh, Malcolm Tolliver from Digital Lens Media. Um, also want to thank um, Ebony J Media, LAI Communications, Easily Bless, Blossoms, and all of the stagehands who are part of the union that were there and um, Punky Pixels. So it just took a whole team. And I want to thank my team, especially um, uh, my chief of staff, uh, Quentin Monroe came right back from his honeymoon and <laughs> I didn't even get to say, how was your honeymoon? It's like, let's get to work. So I want to thank him and Edgar Malcolm because I know that their feet and, and legs were hurt, hurting running up and down the steps and making sure everything was great. Uh, but also thank all the people that came out. Uh, it was a great affair. Lastly, uh, Madam President, I do want to um, bring up issue uh, that we've heard about uh, regarding SORTA and CPS. And I just wanna say that, um, and I know, and I don't wanna speak for both of you, I, you, you all be able to speak for yourself, uh, but I do wanna say this, and I'm pretty sure you share some of the sentiment that we got this information last. I mean, we weren't the first to get this information, at least I didn't know about it. And um, here we are 
having a levy, and I'm going to say this directly to Sorta, and I want to say it publicly, um, that I'm not uh, I'm not happy with the direction that we're moving right now. Now we did this levy, and uh, I was out there running, and people had to come through a pandemic in the um, primary. I was in a tough primary myself. And people came and we were saying, vote for this, and we're going to get expanded services. That's what we were promoting, expansion. Not coming back talking about we're cutting services. We're supposed to get more services. And as someone myself who had to catch two Metro buses from the west side where I grew up to the east side where I went to high school with Row on the Metro bus, I am very disappointed that one, we weren't consulted. Two, we weren't given the information in advance. And then three, the taxpayers are, are paying these dollars and I wanna know where the dollars are going because if you're cutting services, then we need to, some of that money needs to be put aside. And I just am not happy with the direction that we're going. And I wanna be really clear about that. And I hope, I know we've had uh, sort of come before us kind of early on uh, but maybe you know we can have something where they come again. But I'm not happy about it. I know that I wasn't here when we were putting our appointments on the boards. Um, but hopefully, when that time comes up, I want our board appointments to at least let us know what's going on. That's why we're appointing them to be the Hamilton County Board appointees, so that we're not in the dark. But this is going in the wrong direction. Now, the other issue is we can't find people to work. Well, when I was at the state, we had a CDL program that we started at the community action agencies, where it's we put money in from Ohio Department of Transportation. We need to be partnering with those kind of programs where you go and get your CDL license, but you have a job at Metro. But none of those things were brought up when this levy was put on. And that's the thing we want to make sure whatever we say we're going to do, once it's passed, we got to do it. So I wanted to bring that up, Madam President. I don't know um, how you uh, want to proceed with, uh, I know you stat whatever comes on a staff meeting, but I do want to make a request, whether it's a staff meeting or here, that sort of comes here to let us know what's really going on. I know they're going to have a public hearing, but you're doing a public hearing after you've made a decision. That's, that's backwards. And we can't move in that direction. We're coming out of COVID. People are concerned. We're going back. We got enough things to be concerned with going back to school. And I'm telling you, I've been on these buses, and it matters to have a CPS bus that they can go to school. And the reason we had, C we had Metro at that time get a contract with CPS, because at that time, they were looking for contracts. So they came in and cut out the yellow bus, and they went with Metro. That's how we got Metro and CPS in the beginning to have those type of contracts. So um, I just wanted to um, express to you, I'm getting, I know you all are getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of calls and I don't like to be in those situations where we're the last to find out about something of a decision like this that we're gonna have to answer to. So I hope that we'll have a chance to have them come before us before decisions like these are made so that we can hear from the public like we always, that's the way we operate here. We like to hear from the public before we make our decisions and we hope that they move in that direction as well. That's all I have, Madam President. Thank you so much. And I'm going to go to Commissioner Driehaus, but I wanna address uh, what Vice President Reese said. I think it's unconscionable, uh, the decision that has been made to, uh, that impacts our most vulnerable people, our children. Um, and so um, I am certainly very upset about the decisions so far that have been made as it relates to children having passes and being on the same bus with adults and all of those things, I am going to direct my chief of staff to set them up as quickly as possible. Tuesday would be good um, before, certainly before school starts. Uh, and um, we can always, you know, give a call to Daryl Haley also and let him know how we feel about the decisions that have made and also the board, um, of sort of how did that decision get made, but definitely have him come in right away because uh, we can't allow this. And as you were saying, we passed uh, issue seven, I think it was, and we were gonna have more. And now we're we're having less. Um, I think it there were some lofty goals. I remember uh, saying to Mr. Mr. Haley, uh, 
okay, very good. Uh, and he was invited, he's invited to our staff, um, invited to staff meeting on July the 27th, right, and scheduled to be here August the 24th, but we'll get him this coming up, because you know we're in between summer schedules, so thank you, Bishop Hilton. Um, so anyway, um, what I was going to say that, um, you know, there were some lofty goals that he had and the group had, and I think they went a little too fast. And as you were saying, they're looking at um, drivers and they don't have enough drivers and all of that. So they're supposed to stop, uh, stop the 24 hour service also. And a lot of people are looking forward to that. So we'll talk more about it. Uh, but in addition, I wanted to talk about the Walk of Fame. Uh, uh, I was going to say the service. I, Bishop gave me this. I'm thinking of the church service. <laughs> But anyway, I let Churchy for a second. Then. <laughs> I, I apologize. But that Walk of Fame on Saturday, I felt like I was in Hollywood. I mean, it was so amazing. Uh, the production was so professional. Um, I was sitting on stage with really my mouth open. So it was absolutely so well done and all the people that helped to be a part of it. And it was so obvious that the people that were honored were so impacted by um, our own area thinking of them. So it was just fantastic. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, I only have one other thing. So why don't I finish? And um, as you know, yesterday we had an announcement that um, FC will be hosting a World Cup game here. Everybody else is excited. I see smiles. It's okay. Um, and it's going to be a, have a big impact on our county, our tourism, all those things. Uh, Columbus is not clapping. I mentioned that before because they get it every time. So we got it this time. And, and I, what I said yesterday when I spoke is that all the things that the World Cup review team from Sweden, and uh, when I met with them along with the other group in March, they were asking, can we have this? Can we have signage? Can we do drainage? Um, you know, can we be in a community where other people are that can, can we employ? Everything that they asked about, we were already doing. So it wasn't about somebody meeting with that group and saying, we'll do this, we'll do that. We had already started a track record. So we're on our way to a brand new day and whoever's recording this, I think we have a great chance of the World Cup coming here in 2026. Now that's just my opinion, but I just think we're on our way to making that happen. Now, All Commissioner right. Driehaus. <laughs> well, I don't know what else there is to say. Um, now, I, I wanted to piggyback on that. I have also gotten quite a few comments and uh, phone calls about SORTA and about what they did with the buses. Um, yeah, we, we were not included in that decision-making process, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, too, think that we need to get SORTA in here to better understand what their thought process is. I mean, I know they don't have enough um, drivers. And I did talk to Daryl Haley a while back about adjustments that would need to be made, but we didn't know what the adjustments were. And now it's like, wait a minute, what are the adjustments that you're making? So, um, you know, they've known about this for a while. And so I do think we need to get more clarification about mm. uh, what's going on because it, it, this relationship has changed. Um, you know, we've got a majority of the board members and the funding's coming from county taxpayers. So mm -hmm. I think we need to have them in on a regular basis, just like Absolutely. we do with MSD. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same kind of relationship. And so I think maybe we need to put them on a, on a periodic basis. A um, couple other things. Internally, um, our emergency management agency under Nick Crosley's uh, leadership got accredited. Um, and it's a huge deal. We've been working to get accredited for years at EMA. Um, many, many um, things that you have to do in order to get recognized with their accreditation. So I just want to say congratulations to Nick and his whole team uh, for finally accomplishing the accreditation process. We at the county um, celebrate that um, collectively because it makes everybody um, have a great deal of confidence in our EMA agency. Um, also, I was going to mention something about the World Cup as well, um, the, the uh, U.S. versus Mexico um, qualifying game here. It, and also, I don't know who's following the Olympics, but uh, women's soccer, um, you know, we're, we're in still and Rose Lavelle is on the team still. So I'm pretty excited that we've yeah. got a Cincinnati rep uh, in the Olympics um, it, through Rose Lavelle, who's a fantastic person. And then lastly, um, the Mill Creek Alliance restoration 
project a couple weekends ago. And uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge their work. They're doing it in a collective way. They've got all these organizations work literally rowing in the same direction. Um, on the Mill Creek, um, there was a canoe event, uh, which I would encourage everyone to do. If you haven't uh, canoed on the Mill Creek, then you haven't lived uh, because it's something to, okay. to canoe the Mill Creek. Um, so, um, but anyway, they're doing a great job restoring wildlife habitat, restoring the water. MSD is a huge part of this, reclaiming that waterway as instead of uh, kind of a, a place that people wanted to avoid and not talk about, now it's, we're reclaiming this as an asset and it's in large part due to uh, the work of the Mill Creek Alliance. So um, I was, and I think uh, Commissioner Reese was at that event too. It was just a great event. So I wanna, just draw attention to the work that they're doing. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Madam President, can I just add one, ask for one uh, point. On the sorter piece, if uh, they're collecting more money because of the levy and they said they need it for expansive services, when we do have that, can we get something? I don't know how that happens. Does that go to the auditor? Because uh, if they're collecting more and they say they can't do these things, I just want to know uh, where, what is our role in terms of the funding? Because we were paying more because we wanted more. But if you say, I only can do this, where is that money at? Um, because we need to probably um, have that addressed. And I don't know how that, is that us collecting, giving it to them? Or how does that work? Um, I, I, I don't know how it works as far as how the money is funneled. But I know once it's passed, that amount continues. Um, so it, really what you're saying is they want to do more, but maybe they're doing too much more because they have to make the, they're making the wrong cut. So that same pot stays there. Um, and then Daryl, as a CEO, uh, facilitates, uh, you know, where that money goes. But like we can't take money back or we can't add money on and we shouldn't have to because right. uh, they have enough uh, to do what they need to do. Yeah. No, I wasn't mean like adding money on. I just want to find out from the writer or something in writing, how does that flow? Because I think, do we release those dollars to them or does it go directly to them? Does it come through us? Usually when it's a levy, there's somewhere it goes. So maybe we could get, we don't have to do it today, but it's a sales tax. Yeah, it's a sales tax. And right. so maybe we can have an overview because as I said, right. the relationship has shifted here. And so maybe um, kind of a reset at a staff meeting where we've got more time to talk about it in depth. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to put maybe we could get something in writing so I'm um, knowledgeable about that because here we go. Uh oh, the money man is showing up. As, as our President Dumas always says, introduce yourself. So make sure you introduce the, the man with the money has shown up. <laughs> Thank you, John. I'm John Bruggen, the County Budget Director. Mm -hmm. I'm virtually certain that the SORTA levy flows directly from the Department of Taxation to SORTA. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Okay. <laughs> and I just wanted to comment about, and if you look at any tapes of me speaking anywhere, you're going to hear the same thing. So when you hear me say whatever tape you look at, it is a new one. But I always say, this is the first time. <laughs> so think about it. Uh, Nick being accredited. Um, He's been working for five years, but this is the first time ever that it's happened. So this is the first time for that. First time, as I said earlier, for hosting the World Cup game. So you're in the middle of first times. So get ready because there are more first times coming. Okay. All right. Now we're moving forward. And I've kind of said, said my stuff already, haven't I? So would you like to, um, she's filling in for Jeff. Let me say one thing about Jeff, though. Um, <laughs> As it relates to sort of the bailiff, the bailiff, the bailiff. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That, oh, no. And I started to ask you when you left if you wanted to hand it in. So You're sorry. okay. <laughs> yeah. First so. time. Jennifer. But I do want to say about Jeff Aludo, who's our county administrator. He saw some stuff brewing as it relates to sort of, and ended up setting up. Huh? end up setting up uh, where he's going to meet like every two weeks with Daryl Haley. Is that correct? Uh, Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Madam President, thank yes. you. I just have a few comments. Um, I do, again, want to congratulate Nick Crosley and his team at EMA for the accreditation. That's a huge deal and a lot, a ton of work for his, his entire team. So the administration is greatly appreciative and thankful for his leadership. Um, I also wanted to, um, Madam President, I know you recognized him at the staff meeting on Tuesday, mm -hmm. but um, it is uh, Tim McCartney's 
last week with Job and Family Services. So I didn't know if we wanted to give him a huge round of applause for all of his leadership, his work. Um, he is going to be missed tremendously and is leaving, um, I think, Job and Family Services in a great spot to move forward. I just wanted to recognize him. Yes, thank you. And then with that, I will leave it to your um, discretion, uh, Madam President, if you'd like to move on to the, we do have some by leaves, but didn't know if you wanted to, uh, your preference was to start the public hearing or the. Uh, why don't we go on and um, start the public hearing because they've been waiting. It was supposed to start at 115. So, uh, so you are Sandra? No, I'm John Hooth with staff. <laughs> like I have guards, I know you're not. Okay, you are John Hooth with okay. Planning and Development Staff. I'll make the presentation okay. if you're ready. Uh, yes, we're ready. Okay. So this request in front of you is a zone change. It's in Green Township. If you look at the map on the screen here, the site is outlined in red. The majority of this site is zoned for residential. The request is to zone it to commercial. Uh, just some points of reference. This is Harrison Avenue running uh, north-south. This is the uh, existing cinema, the new Kroger. This is the old Kroger building, which is vacant, and that is part of this request, the old Kroger building in the parking lot. This is also Manchester Plaza, and Gabe's is on the corner. And then we have Remlin Road just to the uh, northeast. So the site is a little bit less than 60 acres, and again, the request is to change the zoning from residential to double E, which stands for planned retail, which would allow for commercial development. Uh, next slide, please. The next slide will show us the actual development plan. And if approved, uh, the request is to construct a Menards home improvement uh, warehouse. Um, that would include the uh, removal of the old Kroger um, building. So this building here would be raised um, the site plan will show you that Menards would sit about in the middle of the site. Um, they also are requesting a uh, new curb cut onto Harrison Avenue, and I'll show that in a second as well. Uh, there's also, a, there'll be a stormwater detention basin that'll be just south of the uh, building. There is a large kind of outdoor lumber area that uh, circles the building, uh, another warehouse which I believe stores the lumber, which is uh, also behind the building. And just to go over some things until that site plan comes up, um, I was saying the majority of this is zoned residential. The small piece that's already zoned commercial is where the old Kroger uh, building is located. Um, just, I think last month, this commission heard a case, a zone change called Trailside. And that's kind of close to this area. It's just uh, to the south um, on Harrison Avenue. So this is the site plan, um, again, showing the old Kroger building being removed uh, to make way for the Menards Home Improvement Warehouse uh, in the back, outdoor storage around the side. Again, this is Remlin Road just to the north, Harrison Avenue. New curb cut in this area here on Harrison Avenue, a connection to the existing cinema and a new Kroger. I, I call it new, it's been there a while, but it's, it's not the old building, it's the newer building. Um, I have some of the dimensions of the buildings on this uh, slide. And they also are re requesting a, uh, a sign out front, as most businesses do. It would be 100 square feet, 18 feet high. And then a sidewalk connection connecting the building to the existing sidewalk onto Harrison Avenue. Bridget, next slide, please. Thank you. A couple of quick shots of the area using Google Street View. The site does sit lower than Harrison Avenue. This is the old Kroger building, which is vacant, and then the cinema. Next slide, please. Also looking from Harrison Avenue, this is kind of the, the hole that would be built up uh, as earth would be pushed up to fill this hole to make way for the Menards. Um, this is the top of the old Kroger. You see the cinema here as well. And then just one more shot from the interior of the parking lot, cinema, old Kroger building is just off the screen here. Next slide, please. And then the grading plan shows there'd be a substantial amount of uh, earthwork proposed um, moving some of the hillside up to create kind of a flat pad for uh, the building. So all these are new grading uh, lines showing where the grading would take place. 
There would be a stormwater detention basin in this area here. Um, Hamilton County stormwater and infrastructure has been working with the developer uh, to make sure that that is oversized to take care of any uh, stormwater that is released from uh, this project here. Uh, this actually was revised um, just recently to kind of work with some of the residents in the area who had some issues with stormwater. So this has been revised to reflect some of their concerns and needs. Next slide, please. Thank you. This is also kind of a example of some of the public engagement that's gone on with um, this graphic here, which I'll talk about in a second. But just real quickly, we did have a staff review conference back in March. The biggest talking point at that time was uh, existing flooding along Gremlin Road, which is just to the north of the site. Um, we did receive a petition from six residents who live along Gremlin Road who were against the proposal. Uh, staff recommended approval. The Regional Planning Commission recommended approval back in June with the unanimous vote, uh, as did the Rural Zoning Commission back in June as well with the unanimous vote for approval. We did find it's consistent with the Green Township Land Use Plan. It's consistent with the Hamilton County Thoroughfare Plan. The Township Trustees held a public meeting. They also recommended approval of this request as well. And the applicant did meet on the site with uh, at least one resident to talk about some of the stormwater concerns. And that's why they revised that grading plan and oversized that detention basin. And then this graphic here shows that uh, the, the applicant was willing to show a no disturbed area along the creek. So there'll be no grading, um, no removal of trees in this area, which should help buffer the development with the residences along uh, Remlin Road. I do have more slides, other things I could show you, but I want it to be brief. I'll be glad to answer any questions and I'll be uh, just sitting down. If you have any questions, I'll come back up as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to wait for you. If you just hang around, sure. we'll wait and have all the comments come in. Um, so at this time, we have several people that are very um, anxious to say some words as it relates to this. Um, Tyler Edwards. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Tyler Edwards. I am a real estate representative with Menards. Um, I have been with Menards for a long time now. Um, I hate to admit that, but we've been looking for a store on this side of the greater Cincinnati area for five years now. Um, you probably know and have driven around. There's, there's no 17 to 20 acre tracks to fit our store. We sell home improvement stuff, which is all really big. Washing machines, rolls of carpet trusses, two by fours. We need a lot of space to fit those. We need 17 acres of land. Um, so we're, we're more or less manufacturing our own space here. Um, the, the existing Kroger site's too small. So we, 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 what we want to do is move the earthwork around, um, bring some dirt to make a pad that's big enough for our store. Are you familiar with the Menards? Have you been into Menards? So you know what we do in the, the warehouse and the yard. So I won't get into that. Um, we're really, really excited to have finally made this work. Um, it's been a long process. We've been working on this particular site for two years. Excited to be part of the community. This represents a big hole for our market. A lot of people are actually leaving this area to go shop at other Menard stores. Um, so this would be good for those folks and you know everyone else that maybe hasn't been to Menards yet. So we're excited about that. Um, the goal would be to finish up this process through the rest of this year. Um, and then start construction next year. Um, that construction process will probably take all of the year with the amount of grading work that happens. And then um, hopefully open our doors and look forward to being part of the community with another store. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Bob Trencamp. Okay, very good. Thank you. Scott Trencamp. Good afternoon. I am Scott Trenkamp uh, with Thomas Graham Associates. We are the civil engineers and land surveyors for the project. I wanted to briefly discuss our stormwater management plan as this is, as John pointed out, been a uh, item of concern for some of the local residents. Uh, we did meet with them on multiple occasions and because of their concerns, even though we're not through zoning yet, we uh, kind of went a step forward. Uh, we prepared uh, drainage calculations and submitted them to Hamilton County for review. Uh, these calculations have been approved 
And not only do they meet the standards and requirements, they actually exceed them. Um, as was shown on the uh, grading plan, uh, we have a detention basin uh, that has a storage volume that is 25% larger than what is required. Uh, so this detention basin can hold back and detain in excess of a 100 year storm event. Uh, the storm water is then released at a controlled rate uh, so that the peak discharge does not exceed pre-development conditions. So as a result, uh, this development will not have any flooding impacts on Taylor Creek uh, behind the development. Uh, in addition to working with Hamilton County, we also have to coordinate our efforts with the Ohio EPA and with the United States Army Corps of Engineers who have uh, regulations on both water quantity and water quality. And all of those um, requirements will be met or exceeded as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mike, Rick. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Michael Rickey with Anchor Properties. We are the developers, local developers working with Menard on this project. Just have a couple brief comments to make and they have to do with our work with the neighbors. Um, John made comments that we've had discussions and, and interaction and engagement with the neighbors that has gone really well, as far as I'm concerned. We may not have solved all of their problems and addressed all their concerns because quite frankly, they live in an area that is directly adjacent to the creek, flooding occurs, and they're in a difficult situation. Um, what we attempted to do though, as a result of the concerns they had was as, as Scott had indicated, we tried to design a stormwater detention system that not only dealt with the stormwater generated by our site, but then to hold even more. Now, again, everyone has to understand that this is a very large drainage area that drains into that area. And our site is only 60 acres, so it's a very small piece. So the, the impact we're having is very limited by oversizing, not to mention the fact that the system itself meets new regulations and requirements that exceed what was required 20 years ago when the old Kroger store was built. But the point is we've tried to do everything we could. Um, met with the neighbors twice out on site. There were four or five of them each time. Met with them as recent as just yesterday and uh, went over the changes and the improvements. They have my phone number. I'm a local guy, I live in Green Township. They have my phone number, my email address, everything under the sun. And they know they can call me now or when the project's uh, under construction or whatever. So, um, so, you know, we've developed a good relationship and we'll continue to do that. So again, just wanna thank you. One other comment that I have to make because this is, I think, very significant. From a development standpoint, I've been in this business, I've been in this business 32 years. Anchor Properties has done hundreds of commercial projects. We have never ever had a commercial project where we had an impervious surface ratio at 30%. That is incredible, the low density of this project and the low density of this development. And you can see from this exhibit all the green space that's surrounded. So that, that's a very significant issue. And again, it's good from the standpoint of the neighbors on Remlin Road because they have plenty of green area and buffer between their property and our property. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And McBride. Thank you, Madam President. I was I thought I might be going first and I was going to kind of give you guys an overview. Everyone has pretty much said what I was <laughs> intending okay. to say, but if I could just add a, maybe a few uh, comments for your consideration. Um, Menards and Anchor, I've been working with these guys for like two years mm -hmm. to bring this project forward to you um, and to assemble the almost 60 acres working with four different property owners and so forth. So it has been a long time in the making. I know that this commission um, considers uh, heavily the consistency with the adopted land use plans uh, that the county has adopted. And both your staff and all of your commissions, as well as Green Township, have found that the proposed development is consistent, not only with the Green Township land use plan, but also with the Harrison Pike Corridor study and the recommendations that that plan puts forward. Um, your staff, your regional planning commission, your rural zoning commission have all unanimously, as well as the Green Township trustees, recommended approval of this development to you. Um, and as uh, Mike Rickey was saying, 
I've been doing this apparently longer than he has over 40 years, but <laughs> at any rate, uh, the uh, site has 70% open space. And I, I honestly can say in my over 40 years, I don't think I've ever worked on a site that has had 70%, which is 40 acres of open space to go with a development. Um, the building sits back about 490 feet from that close to the rear property line. So it's it's really a, a unique and significant development. Um, it, you know, not only does it take out the vacant Kroger store, but it also is a $14 million investment into the community. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trifon Callis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, to the commissioners, Madam President, Madam Vice President and Commissioner Driehaus. I will be brief with my comments here today, um, but one thing that I really wanted to highlight to this board, and we have listened to uh, this board and how you want projects to occur, how you want things to go, um, the process and transparency. I, I addressed this board in regards to a uh, project last month, which was referenced earlier, and that is Trailside, and as follow-up with the Menards development that is proposed here today, as you, as you have already heard, we have had uh, five meetings, and that does not count the applicant and his team, all of the meetings that have transpired the last month, along with taking the residents' thoughts and incorporating many of those thoughts as, as of even yesterday into this proposal. So from a process standpoint, a transparency standpoint, we have continued to follow, I think, the lead that you have uh, expected from the various communities. So I just wanted to briefly highlight that to the board today that we've continued to do so with this project and we would greatly appreciate your consideration because I know the community it's not just Green Township um, the whole west side of town the city of Cincinnati Westwood Price Hill Green Township Delhi Mount Airy a lot of folks will be happy to have a Menards uh, in our community so appreciate your consideration thanks for the time to address the board today thank you so much and you are a Green Township trustee for whoever's listening so thank you we have, okay, Adam Goldman. Yes, you guys need to write better. Right. <laughs> Adam Guess from Green it. Township. I'm the uh, development director for the township. And thank you. Kind of to echo what has been said in the past, um, recently here, the project's gone through a, a number of reviews. And one of the things that we do want to stress is we do have a very rigorous land use plan in Green Township, and it is constantly reviewed and reviewed by um, the Regional Planning Commission, the Township Trustees, and in, in-house uh, land use planning committee. And this project does align very well with our land use plan. And one of the issues that's been brought up a couple of times is the intensity of development. And that does translate into kind of conformance to the land use plan. And what's interesting, I think, uh, about this is that that portion of that site that will be left open or green will ultimately be renaturalized through over time, uh, of course, but it will be an, um, a foundation that will provide a long term benefit for the township with regards to the amount of intensity of development of a site like this could uh, support. And that said, the site could support more intensive development if it was developed under a different plan. So I think where uh, it's been stated that the 30% uh, impervious uh, surface area is relatively low, it is, but it also reflects the fact that it, it does separate the building consistently or very uh, well from adjoining property owners and a more intensive development of the site would probably bring a lot more development activity closer to adjoining property owners. So um, if there are any additional questions, I know traffic's a concern, uh, a traffic impact study, county engineers here, in attendance today, but traffic impact study was required and the, they will be meeting those standards established by the HCEO's office. So um, mm -hmm. if there are any questions, be happy to try to answer them from staff so from a township perspective. I know Frank Birkenhauer is here also to talk about economic development. So I appreciate your time and effort. Thank you much. Thank you so much. And our next speaker is Frank Birkenhauer. And I was just going to say Frank, and then he <laughs> said it like, oh, that's his name. This <laughs> that's is chicken worse. scratch. Yeah, I was this trying is to worse. So thank you. Thank welcome. You. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, commissioners, for uh, your time today. And I'm going to be very brief. I just want to talk about from an economic development standpoint for Green Township and Hamilton County, how difficult it can be to uh, redevelop a vacant big box grocery store. There's one vacant on Colerain Avenue and on Harrison Avenue. Uh, the one on Colerain is just on our border. And uh, I don't know how that's going to be redeveloped in the future. But we have such a great opportunity here that I don't think we can uh, pass this uh, opportunity by. This is a 15 to 16 million dollar development, 150 new jobs in Green Township and Hamilton County. 
The annual store sales beginning in year one, they start at 40 million. Um, so it's a it's just a great opportunity for us to actually do better than we did with the Kroger. And uh, my concern is with these uh, vacant big boxes is they can lay vacant for years with no uh, users. And uh, this is a great thing for all of us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the speakers. Uh, at this point, I'll open it up for my colleagues. If there are any questions or comments, Vice President Reese, you have some uh, I, I do. I do, okay. Madam President. We have one virtual speaker. Carrie Davis would like to speak on this subject. Okay. Carrie, you're unmuted on my end. Okay. Um, all objective Menards going in out there. We want you guys in coal rain. <laughs> you get, um, as a business owner that, that does maintenance and facility maintenance, um, as well as residential needs. God darn green township we wanted menards um in colrain um and i will comment that i'm glad you're paying attention to the stormwater i go to these meetings all the time and that's really serious business because um colrain's flooding issues are getting worse everybody's on the west side are getting worse so i'm glad that you're not looking to meet the minimum standards and you are exceeding them and trying to help the residents with the problem that you did not create um, by um, expanding it. But I would also like to add that we, in the west side of town, we're having problems with these heat islands. Um, and so I would ask that when you look at your retention pond, that you look at the possibility of it being some type of um, almost recreational area with um, possibly opportunities for um, people to walk around the, the holding basin if the water levels satisfy that, um, but to probably double the minimum requirements on your landscaping and your trees because we have a growing problem with the heat island effect of these big shopping districts and if we don't step it up it's just going to get worse i know in coal rain because of all the one old lady told me years ago and now i'm that old lady she said this is concrete coal rain and concrete coal rain is really harming our community so i would ask that you use the same diligence and um efforts to uh appease the neighbors on um flooding that you do the same with the um, landscaping and the trees and try to um, protect the environment in that area. Um, also, thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you my for time, your comments. Is yeah, my time it, up? Excuse yes, it me. is. Okay, well, I have you. one more thing to say. Well, um, you wanna, may I? Uh, um, you were addressing this issue. Is it another issue you'd like to address? No, what I wanna point out to you is that this same process, we're going through this huge process to put a Menards, but in Hamilton County, we can put a landfill in that space. And there is no process like this because the board of commissioners refuses to pass rules okay. thank that you, allow Davis. us to have- Ms. Davis, you, uh, Ms. Davis. That allow thank us you to for, have rules. Ms. Davis, to, if you still continue to behave like that, you won't be able to call because you said you wanted to talk about this project. I am discussing this. I'm talking about okay, the process. But your, but your two that minutes this, is up. Thank you. Have a great day and call us again. Okay? Thank you. All righty. Madam um, President, we yes. have one more speaker. Steve Norris, you're on muted on my end. Um, yeah, I met with Mike Rick, myself and a lot of the neighbors met with Mike Ricky. Yesterday, he has addressed a lot of our concerns as far as flooding. Um, and all of the comments I've heard so far, everybody is for this project. I just want to say that as neighbors that will be adjacent to this, we are not for the project. Um, we're worried about all the grading, the, the, the loss of tens of thousands of trees. And I know everything is mentioned is positive and it's good for the community and everybody wants the Menards. Um, we do not want a Mar Menards, but I don't see that. And, I, and we have done everything we can. 
um, to work with them. And I appreciate all, everything that Mike has done to help us. But I guess I just want to go on the record as we do not want it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for calling in. And um, what would be very helpful if you knew of other residents for any, um, any concern, any complaint, that more of them would call in and let us know about their uh, disagreement with the plan. But I appreciate you calling in and expressing your concerns. Okay. Um, so I will now, with no one else on the line, I'll open it up for Vice President Reese. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, I do want to thank um, Trustee Callos and um, Administrator Frank. Thank you all, because coming in new, um, you came to me early on and said, hey, these are some of the projects um, that are happening in Green Township. If you have any questions, I did have questions, had a lot of questions, but we kind of went back and forth on some of those questions. So it helped bring me up to date. Um, and I do want to thank you for that. Sometimes it's difficult to get things uh, you know, at the last minute, something like this. Um, and during that time, there were some questions that I asked that I had received from uh, residents and listening to the testimony today. And even uh, Mr. Norris, who has indicated that, yes, uh, I have been spoken with um, and, uh, you know, our concerns were heard. And at the end, it may not be the, the end result that he wanted, but the fact that people were heard um, and that they had a chance to, uh, you know, be heard and, and, and expressed. And then there were some changes that were made from it. So it wasn't just a listening session. Uh, there were some changes that uh, were made. And so I do want to acknowledge that uh, for Mr. Ricky. Um, and I know it has to be tough for you because you live there. And when you live there, people could come to your house. And, <laughs> and, and certainly... Um, my, my dad's eyebrows went up because he lives in Green Township, but he has to, he goes to Evendale to Menard. So uh, his wife sends him to Evendale to go to Menard. So, but um, the fact that you live there, you're not coming in from out of town and just coming in and make a buck and get out of town. You actually live there and certainly have um, concern to make sure that the area is good. The other thing is we also uh, make our money from sales tax. And um, certainly this is uh, something that creates jobs, but also people can shop there. So, and when you look at the green space and uh, as was indicated before, large amount of green space that, you know, when a, that's unusual for these types of developments. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, the efforts because I know, I think the last time you all were here on a, on a different project, we we're like, no, the developer must talk to the people. Right. And here you are on this project. You've talked to the people. You've made adjustments. Uh, you live there. You're accessible. So um, that to me goes a long way with with something like this. So just wanted to say that, Madam President, that I do appreciate uh, Green Township listening and willing to talk to citizens, willing to be accessible and also willing to make changes in the areas where, you know, you say, hey, that was a good idea from the public. We're going to make this change. And uh, you're coming back to us with a, a little bit of a different pro pro uh, project that has um, the implementation of some of the things that the residents have asked for. So I did want to acknowledge that. So thank you for that. Thank you. Commissioner Greenhouse. Thank you. Um, yeah, I too, you know, these projects that we've gotten recently do look very different from what um, not only this commission, but other commissions have seen in the past. Uh, for projects that I'm familiar with from the West side where the development butts right up against adjoining property owners um, and is um, it's, that's problematic. And so I think um, it is fair to say that this allows, as did the last one, a lot of green space surrounding the development so that the impact is lessened than to the abutting property owners. And so I too uh, am grateful for kind of this, this different look that we're getting when it comes to really smarter development and more eco-friendly development than we've seen in, in prior um, years here on the commission. Um, and also uh, thank you for having the public meetings locally. It is difficult for people to come down to these meetings or some of the other meetings that are part of the process. And so when Green Township hosts the meeting, 
um, and Trustee Callis talked about this, it is so much easier for people to access those meetings and feel heard. And so I just wanna thank Triffin and, and Frank and Adam all for um, implementing an extra step here so that people can weigh in and have some of their, especially stormwater issues in this case addressed. So I, I too applaud that. Um, one, I have a question, of, it's more of a technical question. So I don't know if maybe John wants to come back, back up. Can we get the map up that parcels out, the, it shows the boundary lines for the different parcels? Uh-oh, did Bridget leave? Bridget just oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm just gonna talk about it then because okay. I can see the map in front of us. Yeah. And so from my recollection, there are three properties, the one where Kroger sits, mm -hmm. the one where the new Menards is gonna sit. And then there's this little piece that from my vantage point looks like it's to the Southeast, I guess, a little oddly shaped oh, chunk. Yeah. What, what is that? That is an area, if you were to look on the grading plan, that is an area where they're gonna be moving some dirt and pushing the dirt uh, towards the Menards building pad to make it more level. Yeah. So there would not be any building or parking in that area. There would just be an area of grading. So that's on the other side of the big power lines. So it's okay. an area where they'll be taking dirt so they don't have to ship dirt to the site. I got you. I was just wondering the reason for it. It looks like some kind of ancillary extra little piece. You're talking about right here, Yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So they're gonna use the dirt from it to build up the other part correct. of the site. Yes. Okay. I got you. I just I also wanted to make sure it was going to remain um, something that's not developed on. And That'll it sounds be part like of the green the space. Case. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. That's all the questions I had. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, with no further questions, um, I certainly will uh, make a motion in a minute to close the public hearing. Um, I want Holly to tell me what the next steps are uh, as we move forward. So um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dewey House? Yes. Thank you. Next steps. Thank you, Madam President. And I will just ask John to come back up to confirm. Mm -hmm. um, John, the next step would be to bring forward a resolution? Yes. Okay. I'll prepare a resolution and bring it down tomorrow. And then that'll be on your consent agenda on your next scheduled meeting, okay. which should be the 12th. 12th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you. And I wanted to just say a few things. You, you can sit if you want to stop. But um, we were saying how the plan looks a little different. And I think um, our commission needs to be proud about that. Our board has indicated that the bar has been raised as far as expectations of what we want to see. And you guys bring us what we want to see, which includes, uh, you know, community input. You were doing that before, but people are going beyond where they used to do. And, and you know, we talk about grading and all those kinds of things. So uh, I think we need to take a little bit of credit as a board that we have raised our bar and people that come in, trustees and, and everyone else, they know uh, what's expected. So I appreciate that uh, happening. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move forward. I didn't hear you. Oh, that's what I was getting ready to say. Okay, thank you though. Teamwork, that's what I'm talking about. So we're gonna move uh, forward because Holly had some bylaws she wants to bring forward for us. Holly? Thank you, Madam President. Um, as you know on your agenda, we have um, a few by leave items, um, all related to the Children's Services Levy. And I'd like to introduce Lisa Webb, our Senior Policy Manager, who is also oversees all of our levies uh, to provide the board with the presentation. Uh, Lisa? Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm here representing the Children's Services Levy uh, Initiative this year with the Tax Levy Review Committee to bring everyone up to speed with just some background on the levy. Um, the Children's Services Levy provides local funding for federal and state mandated services for children provided by Hamilton County Job and Family Services. The levy first was first approved by voters in November of 1981 and has been set at 2.77 mills since 1996. This means the levy has collected $40 million a year since that time, no inflationary or other adjustments. Just important to note how long that has been around. Um, in 2016, the review for the levy for the ballot that year 
found an impending shortfall of the levy balance due to several factors, including Medicaid modernization, decreasing revenues from several sources, including the end of Protect Ohio, caseloads more than double the recommended level per caseworker, opio opioid addiction creating additional impacts on child safety. All of these were impacting stressors for children in care, as well as staff and families. Children in placement at that time had risen from 1,500 children in 2012 to 2,500 2, children in 2017. The commission at that time voted not to increase the current 2.77 mills, but to wait and review the levy in early 2018 to, and I quote, address any impending overage or shortfall at the November 2018 election. This levy um, at the 2.77 rate was approved by voters at 71%. That's the highest support of that levy to date, going back to 1981. Um, since then, JFS had a 41% increase in children in care between 2015 and 2017. The 2018 review found that due to this increase, state and, and as well as state and federal reductions in revenues, JFS was anticipated to run out of money within three years without additional local revenues. The quote from the Tax Levy Review Committee report at that time stated, Ohio's children's services, children's services are in crisis. With higher service needs, more children in care, more complex needs, kinship families in need of support, and an overburdened workforce, all are exacerbated by significant cuts in funding. JFS's resources simply cannot keep up, let alone improve. For children's services to maintain the minimum services required by law and human decency, additional revenue is necessary. For children's services to maintain the level of services to a best practices level, our voters need to support an even higher level of funding. Um, as a result of that review, the commissioners put on an additional 1.98 mil levy for a three-year period, bringing us to now, um, that was approved by 60% of voters. Those combined levies generate $80 million roughly a year in local support for children. This additional funding has allowed JFS to begin work piloting a number of preventative services for children and families, including the implementation of a family rights advocacy program to assist at-risk at families with education and counseling to provide a sounding board and guidance for families in the JFS system. The introduction of a kinship care payment program for families providing $350 per child resulting in increase to kinship care from 31% in 1970, or excuse me, 2017 to 38% in 2020, uh, as well as a weekly dashboard report available to the public with information on the number of children in care, caseloads, and other real-time data, as well as expanding workforce hiring and retention efforts that have helped to reduce the vacancy rate within JFS from 21% in 2017 to 15% now. Um, and I don't know if commissioners that have been here, I believe it was 40% even at one point back in 15 and 16, significantly higher. Um, there's the 19, as well as a 19% reduction in staff caseloads for ongoing caseworkers, bringing those levels now in line with national best practices and new programs, including safe sleep, 30 days to family, family voice advocacy, and most recently blind screenings for intake removing the child's race from an intake evaluation to address cultural bias and the outcome of the assessment. The Tax Levy Review Committee, TLRC, began its review of children's service, services for the November, the November ballot in January of 2021. The review engaged the services of public consulting group. These are the same consultants that did our reviews in 16 as well as 18, making the 2020 review and a continued update on what JFS has been doing. The TLRC subcommittee led by John, John Smith, as well as Jenny O'Donnell and Bishop Ennis Tate, as well as JFS staff were actively engaged in the review, as well as focus groups of JFS clients that had not been a part of previous reviews. PCG found that JFS needed to receive a minimum of $68 million a year to maintain current levels of services and recommended continuing the current levy revenues to provide additional recommended initiatives and services focusing on preventative care for families and children. The full TLRC held a public hearing on the levy in June of 21, followed by discussions, uh, discussions leading to unanimous support of the recommendation to combine the current levies and continue current le levy funding. The recommendation was presented to the commissioners on June 29th. 
Since that time, the commissioners have held an additional public hearing on uh, July 15th to hear it from the citizens. The commissioners um, after that date have, were given three levy scenarios and requested that the auditor to cert certify these for consideration. Uh, the first was the TLRC's recommendation of a combined renewal levy, as well as two other renewal and replacement options. The commissioners have those before them now uh, for consideration as the by leave items. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I will open it up for my colleagues to make any comments as it relates to the summation that was given uh, today, Vice President Reese. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam President. And uh, I wanna thank everyone that participated on the tax review levy, as well as your leadership. Thank you so much um, for the presentation. Just want to make it clear before we vote, uh, because this can be um, confusing mm -hmm. to folks. Um, and um, the reason why I know it because it was confusing to me originally. And as a uh, as a marketing uh, specialist, I specialize in making sure the points are clear and concise. And so one of the things you give a lot of background, and uh, Ms. <laughs> Webb, thank you for that. But I want to be clear that for those who are watching, we had, there were two levies, and I'm not saying this for the board, just for the people watching, so they understand. There were two levies that the taxpayers were paying for. Mm -hmm. We are now moving to get rid of one of those levies, combined it into one levy. Uh, so we're already moving to, um, moving to something that is, um, from, from two to one. So I think that's very important. Um, you, there's a certain way that the, the language has to be written, but at, there also is a bottom line. And so with this, uh, that we're going to be considering the review levy, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, they are recommending getting rid of the two levies take that off the taxpayers' backs, have one levy, make sure that that levy can cover the state mandates, because the state gives us mandated what we have to do, not what we wanna do, but say that you have to come up with how you're gonna fund it. But also to the next phase of these are our children and we have to make sure that we do everything in our power for our children to get a fair shake and a fair opportunity in this very tough world, coming in tough circumstances so that they too can have a chance at the American dream themselves. And so a lot of the services that are provided, whether it's the safety of our children, the future of our children, the mental health of our children, our children able to be in a family environment, whether it's their, um, biological family, whether it's the kinship, grandma, grandpa taking care of grandkids through kinship, auntie taking care of children so that they're not out here in these streets, uh, alone foster parents who are stepping up, um, or whether it's parents who just need help in being good parents with the right resources. So all of those things are um, at risk. And so I just wanted to, um, uh, we've got three potential proposals. Um, I am inclined to support the recommendation of the tax review levy that takes us from two levies to one levy. Um, and virtually from a technical standpoint, it keeps things flat. Now, the language, you know, we get the lawyers involved. They got all this language for billable hours. I, I can say that. But they got this language, but we can't be tricked up with the language. This is going to be flat. It's not going to be um, uh, an extra. And we're going from two to one. So I wanted to highlight that it's going to be tough for us to get that message out. But the message starts today. We're going from two to one. We're going to have um, it on the ballot. And our children are the ones that are at risk. So with all of those components together, I'm supportive of the T, 
TL Tax Review Levy Committee. I tell you, when you get to government, boy, we got all kind of acronyms. A is for Apple, J is for Jack. We got all kind of stuff. But the Tax Re Review Levy Committee, uh, who's done a lot of work, has been out on the ground. Um, it's a great mixed group of different people, different backgrounds, some people who have uh, mental health experience, Dr. Jenny O'Donnell, to someone like a Pastor Tate, who's out there on the streets every day when there's an incident with young people, he's out there marching and walking, uh, who's on the ground. So um, I'm going to go with their recommendation and support our, our youth and make sure that we've got the right message out there. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I would add if, very yes. quickly, mm -hmm. um, just so, to let you know, getting back to the flat purpose of this levy, the two levy com levies combined currently cost the $100,000 home $109.31. The combined levy will cost a $100,000 home under that scenario $109.13. Mm -hmm. President, can I just say that one more time? Because in marketing, say, you're paying $100, $109.31. And with this one, you'll be paying 113 cents. 13 cents. And because of the state law, um, we were at the state, but at the state law, we had our levy before they changed the rules. Mm -hmm. So if we do a renewal, which is the recommendation of the tax review levy committee, we also get a rebate, mm -hmm. a rebate. But if we come with something else, we don't get a rebate. So we're, we're, we're grandfathered in, which brings more resources to help our young people. So I just wanted to highlight that too. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, Lisa, uh, for not only giving us the presentation today, but for your years and years of service on, uh, on all things levy related. Um, and I too want to thank the TLRC. The TLRC um, you know, is a, a fairly large group, but we did have a subcommittee working on this one. It's John Silverman, Jenny O'Donnell, and Ennis Tate, and then Gwen McFarland um, kind of leading the way for all of us. So I too want to thank them for their work. These um, levy reviews are not easy and they're super complicated. And this one was super complicated because we're combining, as you say, uh, two into one. So uh, I, I too am uh, going to support the recommendation from the group. Um, it's a combined renewal. That's that's how I think of it, of uh, the two levies into one. Uh, it won't raise your taxes. In fact, it'll reduce taxes a little bit, but that even mm -hmm. confuses things more. So I'm just going to say it won't raise your taxes, which is true. Um, and then it continues to provide these critical services um, that are uh, keeping kids safe in this community. But beyond that, it allows us to do some of the innovative things that we were able to do when we passed the new levy mm -hmm. um, in 18. And that was the reason for it. It was, it was to uh, make sure that we could retain caseworkers and make sure that they had a reasonable number of cases so that they over, weren't overwhelmed because we were losing people like crazy um, back then uh, because they were just overwhelmed with the work. But it also allowed us to do things differently. And so I, I want to um, take a moment just to credit Moira Weir and Tim McCartney for the vision where, you know, in Ohio and really throughout the nation, we serve as a model of how to take a more proactive approach when it comes to keeping kids safe at home if possible in providing supports in the home, because we know that's the best for the kids in most situations where we can keep them safely at home, not always. And that's why we have the system you know, to begin with. Um, but we started to move in a direction where we were trying to support families. We uh, are giving the stipend for kinship care, which is something that was brand new for any county in the state. Um, really helped out when you talk to those caregivers. I mean, they just weren't able to watch the kids um, without the stipend. It was just too difficult for people who want to set income. And so uh, we were able to do that, which I think has driven our numbers up, thankfully. And the kids entering, the, the calls we're getting are high, uh, mm -hmm. but the kids finally enter, entering the foster system were a little bit down before the pandemic, which I think goes to this idea that we had put all this preventive stuff in place to make those dynamics work. COVID then happened and we had a, a wrinkle in the system where the folks that were seeing kids every day, teachers, um, coaches, were now not able to report some of what they were seeing. And so COVID threw all the, everything out um, by way of the numbers and the data. Um, but I, I, my personal concern is that as we move, I hope, 
um, out of this COVID situation, we get kids back in school, uh, we're gonna see those ca cases and those calls ramp up again uh, because there will be eyes on the kids. And so I think we need to be prepared for that. Um, I think this recommendation allows us to be prepared for that um, no, one way or the other and continue to do this great work where we're keeping kids safe in this community and trying to keep families together, um, whether it's through um, supportive services, kinship care, or, you know, eventually um, working their way through the system. Um, so um, I, I also want to say that, um, you know, as we move through these things, we always have the opportunity to do these mid levy mid levy reviews um, to make sure that um, you know what we passed the levy because they're five year levies. And so we take a look after a couple of years and say, hey, is this working? Is there anything we need to do differently? And so I would encourage that we take a look probably in two years um, and do a mid levy review as we did in 16, you know, the mid levy review was in 18. Um, maybe do that again for this one to make sure that we're hitting the mark. Um, but I, I am grateful for the work that's been done. I'm very grateful for the folks at JFS, Tim, you, Moira, Amy now, and, and really the team, because we've got so many frontline workers over there that really are uh, looking out for the interest of kids in this community. So I will be happy to support the recommendation of the TLRC. Thank you. Thank you so much. I won't be redundant. You ladies have said it all. It just allows us to continue the services with our children and maybe even give more services to, to new children. So I also am in support of the TLRC um, recommendation. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to adopt option one or by leave one. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. And that being said, since we approved by leave one, there's no action necessary on by leave two or three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, we'll move forward. And our engineer has been patiently awaiting. So we'll go to our regular agenda. All right, how are you, Mr. Dad? I'm fine, how are you ladies Great. this, this mm -hmm. afternoon? Great. Um, have three items for you today. Uh, item number one is a resolution authorizing a joint agreement between Hamilton County and the city of the village of Indian Hill uh, for the maintenance improvements to bridge, two bridges on Lovell and Madeira Road. This will allow the county to uh, partner with Indian Hill on their resurfacing contract to do deck work on two bridges on uh, a Lovell Madeira Road with inside the village. Um, the county's uh, cost is $42,570, which comes out of the engineer's permissive auto funds. Is that the total cost? That's total cost for the county portion, okay. yes. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments? Uh, just one question, what is the total cost? I do not know, it's, it's oh. part of Indian Hills resurfacing program and I'm not sure gotcha. what their total program is. Gosh, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Yep. I'd like to like to make a motion to adopt item one. Second. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Dreyhouse. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, item number two is a resolution authorizing the county engineer to prepare and submit applications to participate in the transit infrastructure program and execute agreements as required. Uh, we've uh, submitted two applications for the transit infrastructure program. As you've talked already today about the sort of tax, um, that was a 0.8% increase in the sales tax. Of that 0.8%, 25% was designated to go directly to infrastructure improvements, which is not the same as the other portion that was for operating. Right. So this is uh, to allow us to apply and, and hopefully get some grants to do some roadway improvements on routes that have transit on them. Is so, it normally matching grants? Yes, it is. We, we are applying for these. We have to put in a 10% minimum local. Mm -hmm. So that, that is what we're put, we applied for the minimum. So we're asking for a 90% grant on these two projects. All right. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I'd like uh, to, oh, I, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what area is this that we're recommending? Um, we're looking at Mount Alverno and Pedretti Road, which is in the west side. Uh, Simpson Avenue is off of, I believe, off near Hamilton Avenue in Springfield Township mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. And, they, and they have to be routes that have transit lines on them. So that's, it's kind of restrictive as to which projects we can actually apply for at this point. Gotcha. And is this, um, are there other 
areas in Hamilton County that are along the route that are- There are other ones that we've looked at um, that we will be applying for in the future. And as the routes change, we will continually update it. And in addition to these two, the city also applied in partnership with us for the Western Hills Viaduct. That was one of, you know, obviously yeah. the major project that, right. that we, county and city both are working on. So that was one of the projects that was applied for by the city. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, can I just ask a question? Is, are these running through the integrating committee then? The way it will work is sorta is doing the reviews of the applications and will prioritize them in their ranking system. And they will present those to the integrating committee and the integrating committee has the has to approve their project listing. So yes, they will come through the integrating committee. Mm -hmm. of so OPWC. I guess what part of the phase then does this represent? This is just applying to SORTA and these projects will then be ranked. They may get funded, they may not get mm -hmm. funded. So they'll just become part of the part the of the application that go to the integrating that committee. That is correct. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. And we, we don't know where they will end up in the priority. So what is the composition of the integrating committee? Who's on it? Would you... oh, it caught me off guard there. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I, I am the chairman. Um, there, there, there's members of, of from the city of Cincinnati, um, the Township Association, the Municipal League, and there's a member from private industry. Okay. And I, I can get you the exact list if That's you'd like fine. that. So yeah. approximately how many people? There's, I believe, 10. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All righty. You go ahead. Let yeah, it may be if you have the pack, it may be, it may list that. Oh, no, I didn't get, I'm just okay. I'll catch up. Do we make any, do we make those appointments or is no. that through you or but is it you, already? The commissioners approve the, the private industry one. Okay. The county engineer is by, by code. Yeah. Um, I, it's 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 spelled out in the code actually how many come from each location okay okay thanks thank you thank you okay i make a motion to adopt item number two. Second. mr summer dumas yes mr reese yes mr Driehouse. yes thank you thank you mm -hmm. um the third item is a resolution um determining necessity and concluding no land or property will be da damaged um, and that for the public convenience and welfare, uh, we'd like to go to bid for Rapid Run Road Bridge B0238, which is a replacement of that bridge in Delhi Township. Uh, it's project number 501722. Uh, that's 100% local funding from the uh, permissive auto, and it's $412,668.14. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, Madam President, mm -hmm. I just wanted to highlight sometimes, you know, um, was that when I was out there um, campaigning and going places, they say, oh, you, you all, they never do anything for our area. And I just want to highlight Dale Hyde Township, $412,668.14. Um, so we do do a lot of projects yes, through our engineering, and I'm seeing a lot come in. So just wanted to highlight that maybe the residents may not be familiar with the things that we're doing there, but just wanted to highlight this is a, a big deal on that bridge. I know that's something Thank they've you. been working on for a while. Thanks. Thank you. And the per permissive auto fund, how much is in there, would you say? The permissive auto, oh. I, I'm not sure with balances, we generally uh, budget about 12 million to be spent out of that per year. Okay, thank you. You'll never come back again, all these questions. No, I don't mind at all. I know, thank you so much. Um, Drea? Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt item three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back from your vacation. Yeah. So we have MSD. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. I'm Jack Renekamp with the Metropolitan Sewer District. Um, I'm the division manager for the office of, of the director and with me today for discussing these three projects that we have in front of you um, is uh, Sam Kloss. He's the uh, project manager for um, these three projects. Mm -hmm. So items four, five, and six is what I'll be discussing for your consideration and action. Um, before I uh, discuss the details of each individual project, I just want to highlight the commonalities 
um, of these projects. Um, and then we'll take them in turn for your consideration and voting. But in terms of what's common to all of these projects is the three are located in Coleraine Township. They're all requests from the property owners as well as uh, the Hamilton County Public Health Service for uh, public sewers, and it's a public sewer lateral to be installed for properties that currently are on home sewage treatment systems or HSCSs, in other words, on-site systems. And the requests um, are, and the process is driven by those property owners. In this situation with assessment projects, it's not MSD who's presenting these to you. Actually, it is on behalf of these property owners coming to you for your consideration and approval. Um, and the requests follow in, in all three cases, um, both Ohio law and MSD rules and regulations that deal with assessment projects. Um, given that, let me uh, describe each one in turn. So item number four is a request for a sewer lateral assessment to for house number 3767 Pool Road. Um, and all three projects are also located on Pool Road. Um, the request is to fund the construction of a, a single sewer lateral um, assessment against this property um, in order for this property to have it constructed and be connected to the public sewerage system, which is in uh, adjacent to the parcel. Um, in this particular case, uh, the Hamilton County Public Health District issued an order in November of 2014, um, and the property owner um, at that time is the same property owner now and had signed a waiver um, and a statement requesting your board to construct the sewer and waiving all rights of objection of having a public hearing and any uh, con contest as to the cost involved. Um, this is one benefit parcel and the project total cost is $77,000 of which MSD has an assessment credit that pays for a portion of that cost, um, which is approximately 65,000 or 84% of the, of the project cost. Um, and so the property owner per policy is left with a, a cost of $12,000, which is for public sewerage, not for any costs that they may incur to connect to that mm -hmm. existing public asset that's being constructed. So how do you handle that 12,000 that they have to pay? You, you use payment plans and things like that? Or? Typically and historically, what has happened is that at the end of the construction, mm -hmm. um, MSD would bring forward to you what's called final assessments. Mm -hmm. Those could range across a number of projects, um, but could include this one. Then the property owner has the option under statute of either paying within 30 days, um, mm -hmm. paying it in full or paying it in part. And whatever is unpaid would be placed on the property tax duplicate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the Hamilton County also offers a variety of assistance, um, one being the home improvement uh, mm -hmm. loan, that's through um, Hamilton County Community Development to assist eligible property owners with uh, affording um, payment of, of these costs. Um, the, the HIP, as I understand it, and I'll ask the administrator to correct me if I'm wrong, is similar to a home equity loan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Entertain any questions before we move on? Any additional questions about uh, item four? Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt item four. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drews? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, again, is uh, a, a sewer lateral assessment for house number um, 3687 on um, Pool Road. Um, similar to what I've discussed already uh, with your board, the, the request is for construction of that uh, uh, sewer lateral assessment. Um, again, it was ordered by Hamilton County Board of Health um, in November of 2012. The cost of this particular project um, is $57,200, um, of which uh, the MSD credit is 79% or um, $45,200, leaving the property owner with a cost of $12,000 as per policy. Thank you so much. I noticed that um, the first property you paid 84%. And then this one is 79%. Is there a reason? How did you determine that it wouldn't be 84% again? It's, it's the luck. I hate to say it this way, but it's the luck of the draw. In other words, the cost of this project is less expensive. Oh, less and therefore, expensive. when you look at the percentage allocated between what MSD will pay mm -hmm. versus what the property owner will pay, that's okay. where the percentage difference comes Thank in. Thank you so much. Additional questions or comments? Nope. nope. No. Okay. 
Make a motion to adopt item five. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drios? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item um, number six and the last item is for uh, a sewer lateral assessment uh, involving house number 3677, again on Pool Road. Uh, similar to as I've explained, this is a uh, single property that is requesting a public sewer access to the existing um, public sewer. And um, the health order issued for this property was in July of 2017. Um, and once again, the health orders are issued because the parcels in question or in front of you today are all within access, a range of access in terms of footage to the existing public sewer. Okay. Uh, the cost for this parcel um, is estimated by Mr. Claus is $57,000. Um, the assessment credit is 79% or $45,000 of the total project cost. Um, at the end of uh, all of the project construction, as I mentioned before, we'll bring you final assessments, we'll which will have the actual costs of the construction. Mm -hmm. And the final assessments are based upon the actual cost of construction. Thank you so much. Any additional questions or discussion? Um, I'd like to motion make a motion to adopt item number six. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate the time. Probably didn't. Yeah, I was going to say, did you want to say <laughs> oh. something? Or? Um, if I was here to, to answer any technical questions that came up. Uh -huh. um, but it sounds like there aren't any technical questions. So thanks for your time. Well, it's good to see your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Sure. Thank yeah. You. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay. Thank you. So we'll move forward uh, with, we have cons some consent agenda items, and then we have an executive session. Uh, let me look at this closely. So uh, we have before us um, for adoption items eight through 10. Um, and items, well, actually we ended up um, adding the 11 on. So, um, so it will be eight through 10. Leslie, didn't you say 11 is? Uh, Adopt. 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 Okay. Adopt. So we're, we're going to go through the whole. So it's items eight through 23 um, for adoption. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt oh, those. Madam President, yeah. I'm sorry. I do have one on item number 13. Uh huh. Can I just sure. say something real quick? Um, item number 13, um, the reason I wanted to bring that up is deals with uh, our depository. Where do we put the money of the taxpayers? Uh, what banks? Uh, who do we put our who do we put our money in for? And I know that we had a um, staff meeting that um, um, that you held, and you had asked them to come in, uh, the treasurer to explain that. And we had a couple of questions about if um, uh, if we could open up the process with credit unions or something like that. And of course, they came back and gave us uh, information. Uh, they gave us a written information, but I want people to know they came back and said because of the Ohio revised code, they could not uh, do that. Um, I had a question, though, about um, this uh, group, and I'm not against the group. The people who were, were depositing our money, $150 million to Fifth Third Bank, $50 million with uh, First Financial Bank, $150 million with Huntington Bank, $70 million with Key Bank. 150 million with Northside Bank and Trust and 150 million with US Bank. Um, my question was, this is a, uh, is this four years, five years? Uh, Holly was gonna let it know. Yes, it is from August 24th, 2021 through August 23rd of 2025. And that is in talking with administrator, assistant administrator Bruggen, uh, four years is required by Ohio Revised Code. Okay, four years is required. Is renewables on here? automatic renewals or does it go out for bid again? Same process. Okay, I just wanted to highlight, um, have, you know, as we move forward and um, five years is a long time. I would have liked to have been two years so we can take a look at it. Uh, but I do want to put on the table, we are looking to leverage the dollars of the taxpayers. So we want to make sure that we're putting our money at places that are also helping 
the people. So I'm not saying any of these are on this list, but I want it in the criteria. They say, oh, we can't do it in the criteria, but I think it needs to be put on the table because we want to leverage. We want to be putting our money where there's no redlining. We want to put our money where there's no discriminatory practices. We want to put our money where they're not picking up and leaving neighborhoods and then have empty buildings sitting there in the neighborhoods. We want to put our money with those who recognize if you are, uh, you know, if you have a contract with the county and you're a small business that they recognize that contract and they can borrow against the contract uh, for working capital as we get into the disparity study and get that passed. Um, those are the kinds of things. And I'm not saying these look like they probably um, are ones that practice this, but as we look at it, we're trying to leverage our dollars. We want the banks that are doing home loans to local people. We want the banks that's doing small business loans to small businesses so that we can leverage our dollars even lo longer and uh, broader than the initial dollars that we have. So um, I just wanted to put that on the record. I'm not saying that none of these people are doing that, but as we move forward, uh, and I just got here, so I couldn't get deep into it. But as we move forward, I want to kind of put that out. This is kind of what you know. our board has been about inclusion. Our board is about small businesses. Our board is about people being able to hang on to their homes. So we want to make sure that we're putting our money with those who have the same principles, guidelines, and the same agenda that we have. So I uh, just wanted to highlight that. Um, but again, um, not saying these people aren't doing that, but wanted to at least have that put on the table as we're, as we're making a deposit. We're also telling them this is what we uh, believe in as a county. So thank you very much. Thank you. And um, John, as we look at the review process to determine that we should continue with these companies, if you could, you or whoever you think should, just write a little summary for us about how you make the determine, not you, but your team, the determination that they are the most appropriate at this time. That would be very helpful for me. Okay, uh, any other uh, comments as relates to the items for adoption? So I make a motion to adopt items eight through 23. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drios? Yes. Thank you so much. And we also have to receive for the record item seven and items 24 through 27. Make a motion. Oh, we have to vote on that? Yes. I think we need to receive for the record item seven, 20, 25, and then uh, it's approved. Okay, that's why I asked ahead of time, but it's okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll approve for, receive for the record. I make a motion to receive for the record items number seven and um, 24 and 25. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. So items 26 and 27. Okay, make a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Drian? Yes. Thank you. Lots of items. Okay. <laughs> we will move forward to our executive session. Uh, before we do that, um, I'd like to just make sure there's nothing else that any comments that any of my colleagues had. Uh, Madam President. I did have one thing about earlier, we had a, um, the Roseline Community Council president came forward and I would be remiss not to say anything. I'll actually live in Roseline. So um, just wanted to indicate that uh, there was a, uh, a letter of position letter from this board, uh, but the board said that uh, any support would be contingent upon the support of the Roseline community Council, I believe uh, Commissioner Driehaus's office led that. So just wanted them to know, I know, uh, you know, sh she was able to speak to us and we weren't, we don't speak back and forth, but I did want to um, highlight that because I know they'll be knocking on my door at my house. So just to let them know that we have indicated that there must be support from the community council. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so moving forward, I'd like to make a motion to uh, go to executive session pursuant to ORC section 122.22 G3 to conduct a conference with an attorney for the public body concerning pending or imminent litigation. Second. Mr. Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you.